Hey everybody, Jonathan here from AJ and Smart, and today you're going to see a clip of a super common question that people ask myself and Jake Knapp um, about the design sprint all the time, and it's a super common problem that comes up in the sprint, and it is, what happens if you go into a sprint and the client already has a really clear idea of what they want to do, and they're so stubborn, they're so fixated on it, that they don't kind of consider other options within the sprint from other team members. So, what happens when you know uh, you're, you're about to run a sprint and let's say the product manager is like look I already know what I want to get out of this um, the clip you're about to see you'll see it's kind of like a different camera different quality everything um, the reason for that is that it's from our design sprint masterclass it's an online course the clip is straight from that and um, the part of the course that you're about to see is just a Q&A with myself and Jake Knapp the author of sprint and I hope you enjoy it hope you get something out of it and see you at the end of the video Dietrich asks <clears throat> what do you do if the client comes to the sprint with an already very clear preconceived idea of what they want to create? Okay, so this is a question that I, I love because it actually gets at something that's really important that I sometimes forget to mention about the sprint. You don't have to come up with the idea in the sprint. It's really not that, I mean honestly like the, the chances that you're gonna come up with the best idea ever for your product in the course of, um, let's, let's, let's compare a group brainstorm and a design sprint and like all the time in the world, like you've been working on the company for you know months and months and months. So chances you're gonna come up with a great idea in like the 30 minutes you do a group brainstorm typically, which is what most companies typically do when they're trying to come up with solutions, pretty slim. Like the chances of the best idea ever are gonna come in that time, pretty slim. Especially since you have like, in 30 minutes you have like 10 seconds to actually think, you know, when you're not listening to other people shout. Um, so group brainstorms don't work so well. Sprint gives you like, you're gonna have probably two days, you know, to really kind of think quietly, think about that solution, formulate it. It gives you a, definitely a much better chance. All the time in the world leading up to it, um, that's probably where some of the best solutions come from. When somebody comes into the sprint, they've already got a solution. It may have been something that the team's already considered or maybe even tried and it didn't quite work. Maybe the timing was wrong. Maybe the person who presented it originally didn't do a good job, who knows? But if you take an old idea and then you use the sprint, which is this catalyst for people to take action, you bring that idea back, like sometimes those are the most effective solutions. So from my standpoint, if I'm facilitating with a team and they've got an idea that they're super gung-ho about, I'm like, great, like you had time to think about that, let's, let's do it. Oftentimes people feel like, look, if somebody brings in this old idea, if the decider's already committed to a certain solution, like we're not getting the most out of the sprint because we're not considering alternatives. Well, in the sprint, you do get to see competing solutions against it. And if the decider chooses, like I wanna do this one thing that I'm really stuck on, fine. Like you're gonna test that by the end of the week. You're gonna get data right away about whether that solution was any good. So I also don't worry about it so much from the idea of like, we may not have found the perfect solution. I've been in enough sprints where deciders, like they they were dead set on something and everybody thought they were nuts and then it worked. Sometimes they're right. So you gotta just test it and go with it. That's actually really interesting because a lot of people worry about that, that the deciders come to the, you know, the, the sprint already with ideas in mind yeah. and they're gonna ruin the sprint. But also one thing to add on to it is, even if they do come with an idea, even if they're really strong about it, I wouldn't necessarily try to like punch it down. When right, they do yeah. see the other people's ideas, often they change their mind. So yeah. allow the process to change their mind if they want to. Yeah, the process will do a lot towards making people feel less attached to their own idea personally and feeling more like these are our solutions and which is the best of our possible solutions. That doesn't always happen, you know? Sometimes if somebody's really fixed on their solution, let them go for it. And the sprint always also gives you the chance to try a second solution. Yeah. Maybe, you know, build it in or have it as a competing solution. So, yeah, don't don't sweat it. Don't sweat. Stop sweating. I'm sweating right now. It's I am too. Here. It's yeah. a sweaty one. <laughs> if you're interested in learning a lot more about the design sprint process, there's a link down below to a free one hour, 20 minute class. Um, I'm in the office, AJ and Smart Office here, by the way. That's why it's a little bit loud. Hey, Laura. Hey, Jacob. Why is Penny yeah, dancing? Yeah. Why are you dancing? Um, are you doing something? I was doing a YouTube video. Oh. This is going to be cut out. Okay, let me finish this YouTube video. So if you want to get the, uh, if you want to learn more about the design sprint, down below there's a link to a one hour, 20 minute free, nice preview of the course. You'll already learn a lot in there. Um, and enjoy. I hope you enjoy the video. Give it a like, give it a subscribe, give it a comment. That's what we love. Give it a dance. Give it a dance!